Thank you so much for joining us on the line with me is Ben Fuchs, who will be taking over this program every Friday from 2 until 4. Beginning next week, if you'd like to talk to Ben, 479-1080 is the telephone number. Now, Ben, the thing you are known best for in the KSCO community is the work you have done filling yeah. in for Doc Wallet on the Using occasion. nutrition to heal the body. Let's, let's talk about that a little bit. First okay. of all, talk to, you, talk to me about your background. In well, health. I'm a pharmacist by trade, but in pharmacy school, uh, one of the things pharmacists study, a lot of people don't realize that pharmacists study, is we study a lot about nutrition, but we don't study nutrition the way a dietitian studies nutrition or the way a nutritionist studies nutrition. We study the medicinal properties of nutrients, how vitamin A and vitamin E and selenium and zinc are actually... Uh, medicinal. They have medicinal properties, and conversely, we study diseases as they are nutritional deficiencies. In fact, if you backtrack any disease state, whether it's asthma or Parkinson's disease or diabetes, far enough, you will find somewhere at the core some kind of nutritional or digestive condition. And so, as a pharmacy student, it made sense to me that instead of focusing on using drugs, which are literally poisons, to try to heal the body, it never made sense to me to why I never understood why we were using poisons to heal the body. I thought, well, gosh, if it's really nutritional deficiencies that are causing our diseases and nutrients are medicines and drugs are poisons, why don't we focus on nutrition, which is what I ended up doing in pharmacy school. I made nutrition my primary focus, and when I graduated pharmacy school, I had, I learned to, I had, I had a lot of information under my belt about nutrition, about the medicinal properties of nutrients, and about disease states as nutritional deficiencies and how to heal so-called disease states using nutrients. And okay, so what I questions. tell folks today is your disease, the signs, the symptoms of your disease state are really your friends announcing to you there's a biochemical dysfunction underneath that can be corrected. So you have high blood pressure, you have asthma, you have uh, diabetes. The diabetes really isn't the problem. The problem is the underlying biochemical dysfunction that's causing the diabetes. So if you correct the biochemical dysfunction uh, nutritionally at the nutritional level, you don't have to worry about the diabetes. Okay, okay, now help me understand a few things. Number one, we have diseases that are clearly based in genetics. No, not true. That's another falsity. Today okay. we know there's something called epigenetics. Have you heard of the term epigenetics? No. Okay. Well, epigenetics is something nobody talks about, but it's well known in the genetic community. It's been known about since they discovered the genome. The human genome was discovered, was, was finally put to... The Human Genome Project was put to bed about 10, 15 years ago, and they realized that while there's only well, there's some uh, 200,000 different proteins in your body, there's only about 30,000 genes. And they were shocked when they found that out. They were expecting to find a gene for every protein. Well, it didn't turn out that way because it turns out that there, is, there are protein complexes that are supersedent to your genetics, and they surround your genetics. And these protein complexes turn your genes on and off. And the protein complexes are referred to as epigenes, epi meaning superior to. And these epigenes are controlled through, guess, get ready for this, David, you ready? They're controlled through your mind, and they're controlled through your feelings, and they're controlled through your food, the epigenes. Do you hear what okay. I said? Okay, so, so explain to me your cure for type 1 diabetes. Yes. Well, type how, do you, 1 diabetes. how do you cure type 1 diabetes? Very simple to do. Now, type, now you're, you're, you mean type 2 diabetes, I think. Or you no, mean type type, no, I mean type 1. Okay, so that's an allergic diabetes. That's a diabetes that's caused by destruction, uh, uh, by a, an autoimmune response to uh, pancreatic cells. Nobody really knows what causes it, but it's suspected that dietary allergens cause it. So, first thing you want to do is get yourself off dietary allergens. Milk is, the, is one of the biggest culprits. Okay, can you show me some actual cures of type 1 diabetes doing it depends on how far along it's gone what if the if the uh, uh, the pancreatic cells that secrete insulin are completely destroyed then you you going to end up on insulin once the damage is done the damage is done but the trick is to catch it before the, all the cells are, are permanently destroyed if you can do that then you're going to you'll maintain your in, insulin secreting cells as long as the insulin secreting cells are are going and you get off of the things that are stimulating your immune system to attack those insulin secreting cells then you don't have to worry about type 1 diabetes. But once, they're, once the, the cells are all destroyed, then you're out of luck. So what would you be doing with children? Getting them off allergens, first, first and foremost. Okay. The most important thing is, is food allergens. Milk is the biggest culprit. I encourage anybody who's concerned about type 1 diabetes to get on a website called notmilk.com. 
Okay. You want to talk about type 2 diabetes? Because that's simple. No, no, no. I, what, I, what I'm wondering is Genetic just pre- about... Well, just about every food is an allergen somehow. Well, no, there's some that are more allergenic than others. But, yes, food, food eating is one of the hardest things we do. And certainly we'd be better off eating a lot less. We don't need as much food as we think we need. You oh, know, absolutely. We're, we're conditioned to think that we have to eat three times a day and that we have to eat every time we go to a party and we have to eat every time we go to a meeting and we have to eat whatever's put in front of us and we have to finish our pla- uh, everything that's on our plates. And this is all conditioning. You know, we're in, we have to we have to correct our attitudes about food first and foremost. One of the first things we have to do when it comes to health is correct our attitudes about food. The less you live, uh, the less you eat, the longer you live. The lower that you does can seem keep, to be the case. Uh, it's a, uh, Reggie in a truck. Thanks for calling. I wanted to get to Reggie Ben before hey, Dave, he's. Hey, how you doing, Doctor Ben? How are you doing? What's up, Reggie? Nice to hear from you. Let me tell you something. When you first started off your monologue there with the you must believe in yourself, I just hit the roof. I just started shouting and uh, yelling. I said, that's my guy. That's my guy. Thank you.